Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Play Planar Conquest. We have won our first fight, but the next is waiting. There is a power knot nearby. And this power knot gives plus 6 power if we build a siphon on it, which all mage units can, and we have a droid that is a mage unit. At the moment we're producing 21 research or 21 power points that we all distributed into research. So actually plus 6 power is very tempting. And look at the loot. Prisoners, spells, items, spell circles. That does not mean we get all of that. We might get some of it. It is protected by nightmare horses who have a lot of hit points. An extremely high armor class, are fast as hell, cause fear, are immune to fire and doing fire damage themselves. However, when you look, they do mostly fire damage and not so much physical damage. They are vulnerable to cold, which might help it. We have a web spell that is called... Um, freezing weapon but that only does 1d2 so against this guys it will do 1d2 plus 1 not really going to help but they cannot attack flyers the other unit the chaos spawn is not a chaos spawn that you know from warhammer fantasy it's a beholder as you can see he has a doom gaze a death gaze and a stoning gaze that is all terribly dangerous because it can kill you outright and with the difficulty of 20 16 and 13 it will probably go through but that is their only way of attacking flyers. This guy has no other attack whatsoever. He cannot even bite you like a normal beholder can do. Not that that will do a lot of damage, but it is possible. Um, his armor class isn't that high. Look at the upkeep cost. Oh boy. So can we beat this guy? Yes, we can. Because the only thing that can hit flyers is the gaze attack. And we have something that makes us immune to gaze attacks. Stone form. It does. Immunity to mind, meh. Death effects, helps against one of the gazes. Poison, meh. Critical hits, meh. Gaze attacks, oh yeah boy, we need that. However, that will dry out our mana supply, so we will distribute all our power into mana. That being said, let's go for next turn, and then we'll cast that spell on our Pegasus Riders. If you ask Boris why are you casting that spell not in battle where it is cheaper because of course it's a lot cheaper to cast spells in battle than on the world map but the spells on the world map for one hand will be permanent on the unit unless you dispel the spell yourself or the enemy does in combat which is theoretically possible. Um, it costs a lot more but it's permanent. And the stone form can only be cast in the world map and not in the battle map. That's the reason I did this. Now we split our forces up. Oh, that was terrible. And we lost a movement point here. And then we interact. You can see that the enemy is far higher in level than we are. Six at uh, ten and six. Oh boy. But we can do this. We have a distance penalty for our spell casting. But we can do this. If we play our cards right, the enemy will have nearly no chance of winning this. First thing is we do is we blast weapon because the armor class of the horses is so high that we have no real chance of hitting them. When you look at that, now we first hit the chaos spawn. Forty-five percent to hit that thing, and we have we are already blessed. So first thing we do is we kill that thing. Important thing to know is the Beholder cannot hit us in any form because we're immune to his attack. However, he is not immune to ours. So, first thing we do is we take him out of the equation. You could theoretically kill him and then come back with the entire army, uh, flee the battle and then come back with the entire army and kill the horses. However, the horses are extremely dangerous. And I'm pretty glad that they cannot hit flyers and we might be able to do this that way. Now, they most, most of the damage comes from fire. If we cast Fire Resistance 15, that will not reduce the damage by 15%. It will reduce the damage by 15. And that is quite amazing. We have 40% chance to hit those guys. We have only got four arrows. That is terrible. And we're doing very, very little damage here. I mean, look at that. That is outright terrible. We now go in and charge them. And we always get one square back and then charge again because that gives a bonus plus two. 
Not that that will help any, but... We'll take what we get. This is a very dangerous fight, because that thing can really, really wreck us. It does not do more any more fire damage, because it only does 6 to 11. And we've got um, a bonus of minus 15 to fire damage, so it cannot really fire damage us, as long as there is only one of those left. However, we're not hitting that thing either. At least not as we want. And it is slowly grinding us away. Will not take long until one of our riders die. And we don't have any healing spells with us. And there falls one rider. But that thing is dead nearly too, so... Situation could be worse. And we get... Uh, Fravor, that is a spell. We get Druids, we get Hide Armor of the Druid, we get Mana, we get Fame. That is actually quite okay. You... Oh, first we split up. You go there. We have no money to buy anything, but at least we know now that it will take three turns to for this thing to replenish. Okay, the question is where do we go with our forces? Uh, sea Serpent, 18 points regeneration, there is no way we can beat that. Um, we have learned a new spell, I guess. Forever. Production income plus 100%. That is an impressive spell. It is level 4. And we've got a lot of mana. That means we can distribute our power to research again. Okay. We have a negative on food. Oh boy. That is a problem. Oh, well. The question is, where do we go next? Gold chest is an idea. Should we look south or should we look north? I say we look this way. There is a gateway. Protected by a basilisk who has gazes. And a lot of hit points. Does a lot of damage, though. But his armor class isn't that high. That's good. And they've got a slime. Oh boy, that guy's immune to basically everything. But he does not have a lot of hit points, though. That's good to know. He's rather slow. And the Basilisk is also rather slow. That might actually help us. Gateway. We can get to another plane. The question is, do we want that? Do we want that? That is the main question. That's a hard question indeed. You go here. We have one army. You're building. This takes, as you can see, four turns to build the nod. How is our research coming by? One turn, we're done here. Okay. This is not, not to be underestimated. What is your life points? Not really enough. Not really enough. And we're doing very, very little damage with our four arrows, so that's not going to win the war. If we fight that, it will involve a lot of maneuvering. 41 life points and 69 life points. However, I think we can pull this off if we maneuver ourselves clever enough. That will be, I think, a story for another day. We'll leave the negative of mana, because with the mana reserves we just got, um, I think we can hold out a bit. 
So with that being said, see each other next time when we try to take the gate.